Welcome back to Solo Adventures! My name is Livy, and I'm here yet again with another BGG Solitaire PNP contest game review. So today the game we're going to be looking at is the Los Alamos Conspiracy, a game where we are spies where we are attempting to steal secret information and escape from the police. So as usual, if you're not interested in watching me play this game, you can feel free to skip to the end. Otherwise, let's venture forth. This game has two difficulty levels. Um, but we are going to do just the normal difficulty, so we're going to use this uh, resource tracker. And we're also going to need to have four tokens that we can use to track when we get the resources. Because this is the ultimate goal of the game. Uh, we are a spy and we are attempting to run around the city and find each of these four resources. And if we can, and if we can escape the city, then we win. If we do not get all of our files, uh, or if the police catch us, then we lose. This game comes with a handy reference card, but I'm going to set it off to the side to save some space. Um, this is as far out as my camera can zoom, so I'm probably not going to be able to play this game optimally. Um, I'm just going to try to play in as compact a fashion as possible to show you how this game works. But if I'm actually playing to try to win this game, then it's really huge and sprawling and can end up really all over the table. Um, okay, but let's cover the setup. So this is just a little guide that you can use to um, help you keep track of the pattern that you need to make to collect a given resource. So when we get set up, um, we want to sort the tiles into various groups. So sort out all the tiles that have an S in the corner and make sure that they're all turned to the green side. So in this game, the green side is for the military police and the yellow side is for spies, but we sort with the military side up. Put all the ones in one pile, all the twos in this pile, and all the threes in this pile. There's four of each of these. And set the exit off to the side and the rest of the tiles are um, also set to the side. So we don't need the start tiles quite yet, but now we're going to set up our stack. So first we put the four resources in a row. Then on each resource, put a two. And then on each resource, put a three. And we're going to make five piles in total. So these are the additional normal tiles that you have to deal out in addition to um, uh, these cards. So we'll do seven. So we do seven, seven, eight, eight, and then the fifth one is nine. And we'll have some cards left over and we can just set them aside. All right, now it's time to shuffle each of these piles individually. When each pile has been shuffled, flip it over from the green side to the yellow. And then you take your final exit tile and this will go on the very bottom. So then we stack them up this way. And this is our draw stack. Then we set our starting tile somewhere here. And we can set our tile storage off to the side. And then we shuffle up these five starting tiles, flip them to the yellow side, and then we have to play them out in order as we draw them. So that one can go there. So this is how our starting map looks. Now we can begin the game properly. So in every turn, there are two phases, but there can be three. So the first phase is optional, and that's storing a tile. 
So if I want, I can take this tile and I can put it in storage. The rule is, is that you can only take a tile from the draw stack. You can only put one here per turn and you can only have a maximum of two here. And you also have to store a tile before you place a tile. Um, I am not going to do that. I'm going to place this one. You see here on this tile, there's a building. So this building might be the real building that we're looking for, or it could be just a decoy building. So we don't know. Um, it could be that uh, this has an intersection that goes that way as well, or it could be that it only goes this way. Uh, but we won't know until the police pass by it. So we can only guess. In any case, we have to lay this out in a fashion that um, continues the pattern here. So I played that and the police now are on the move, so they flip this tile. They will flip a tile every turn and if they catch me, then I lose. But I can play a tile at the end of any of these yellow paths. So let's go again. So these little uh, cards with the puzzle piece that have the spy on them, uh, you can use them to activate other pieces that have uh, pictures of puzzle pieces on them. So as you can see, there are puzzle pieces with a little bump and there are puzzle pieces with a little hole, I guess. And if I have a puzzle piece with a loop on it that I play, I could then play this one adjacent to it and activate its power. So I'm going to do that and put that in storage. And then we will place this tile. And the police move. Here. So this card here has a little square on it, and that means that if I play this card, I can choose to do the action immediately. However, I cannot store this card and use the action later. So what I could do is uh, I could use this card, the communications card, to throw the police off my track and I could flip over any of these cards to make them green if I want, to make them follow a false lead, but in this case I don't think it's going to help us uh, by flipping anything over, so that's our turn. And we can always see the tile on the top of the stack coming up so we can anticipate a little bit. Go there. And I'll send the police here. Okay, so I'm placing my first, res my first resource tile. And you can see that in order to get this cube resource, I need to have a shape that looks like this U. So if I have a shape that I've made, uh, in this case I do, I have the U shape with one continuous path, then that means that I get the resource. So, there we go, one down, three to go. So I will have them flip this over because I can't really build on it anyway. So since I flipped over this tile, you can see this little rotate action, which means that I now have to rotate this card 90 degrees, and I have to carry on from here. Um, as you can see, the path ends, and so I'm basically starting a new path. Um, so I could do either run or um, search. And I think I need to run because the police are hot on my trail. So I'm going to go uh, maybe this way. So when you get the shoe, then that means that you can go um, three extra tiles this turn. 
So one, a two, three. So here's the plutonium. Do I have the pattern? So as you can see in this pattern, there is a green square, which means that at least one of my squares needs to be green in this pattern. And I could ro I can rotate the shape any way that I want, but I can't get this one quite yet. I'm gonna go this way. So if I was to use this binocular action, I could look at the top three cards and um, then stack them back up in whatever order I want. Uh, but I will not do that. I'm going to save this guy for another run action if I can get it. So since the green paths have ended here, this is the next card that is attached to a tile that has green on it. Now I can go Police. Mm. That. And the police flip that one over. Okay, I have a bomb action card, which is good. That means I can take two turns in a row and the police cannot chase me. So I guess I set off a bomb somewhere in the city to distract them. And they come chasing me again. Good, there's another shoe. I'm definitely going to use that and go one, two, three. So this is the first time one of these has popped up. Um, this is the military police symbol and when you flip over one of these cards it means that you have to flip over every path card that is adjacent to it. So in this case, thankfully, it's just one in one direction. But we could have been really unlucky and there could have been two of these in a row and we would have just have to had to uh, keep flipping. So if only we had a green tile here somewhere, we could have the plutonium because we have that shape. Unlucky again. And double unlucky. Another military police. There we go. Oh, okay, this is bad. I should have spent this earlier, but I completely forgot the police have this power. 
If you see this icon come up, it means that they destroyed the cards in your storage. So that didn't work out so well. And let's use the look action. So I can see that I have a resource coming up. I think I want to play that one next. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Let's see, do we have a path that has this shape in it? Oh, I think I was a bit vague earlier when I meant uh, we need a green square in the pattern. That means that we have to have a, a real building, so one of the uh, safe houses, basically. So it can't be just a tile that is turned green, it has to be um, basically like that, for example, or like this. Ah, but we do have that! One, two, three, four, one, two, so we do have plutonium. But I think we have this shape too. Not quite. We can rotate it, but we can't really change anything else about it. So, not yet. And the police are <laughs> catching up to me. So we have to be careful to not make a loop here, because if we do, then we're at a dead end and we might very well get stuck. So we don't want that. Here we go again. Oh, we are so unlucky. They are coming for us. And again. If this was placed adjacent to that, we would have been able to slow them down, but it's not, so we can't. However, now we can, because we attach these two, so I get to take another turn. And another police symbol, and another one. Oh no, <laughs> they're so close. We need to get one of those shoes in fast. No, they are right there. Here we have this resource. Um, this one should be pretty easy to find. I'm sure I have some way that goes. Yep, there it is. And so I have the building resource. If I can only find the money resource and get out of here, we'll be fine.
can use the look action because of these two. I see the exit is very close, but do I have the money? Hmm. Oh, and a police symbol and the police have caught us. So we have failed in our mission. So that was the Los Alamos conspiracy. Let's talk about it. So that was the Los Alamos conspiracy. Um, what are my thoughts on this game? So as usual, I am going to start breaking it down with the build. So the build for this game, I would say is medium because it does involve double-sided tiles. The files provide a gutter fold method for making these tiles, which might well be necessary for a game like this. And if you printed this game on duplex, I don't know if it would line up quite well enough for the level of accuracy you need. Aside from the tiles, this game really isn't too tricky, and you don't really need a lot of extra components, just four additional trackers and no dice. So the art style of this game kind of reminds me of Friedman Frieza, who is a German game designer that you might know of as the designer of Friday. Um, a lot of his games have a lot of green and yellow in them. So there was something about the art style of this game that made me think of 2F games. That is definitely not a bad thing. I think this game looks pretty cool on the table. I really like the core mechanic of this game, which is attempting to escape from the police while weaving specific shapes in your trail. I think it's pretty novel. There's also a pretty decent amount of tension that you feel attempting to escape from the police. And I know that I always start getting really nervous when they start catching up with me. I like that this game has various difficulty levels, and if you like, you can even add on extra resources that you need to collect, uh, more than just the four of the basic or hard difficulty. I really like the puzzle that this game presents me. Um, I didn't really do so well in that playthrough that I was just doing, but that was because I was playing for the camera. Um, when I have time to really play this game by myself, I can slow down, um, think about everything that I'm doing, try to plan the kind of shapes that I'm going to put out there. This is a really thoughtful and slow-moving, thinky kind of game if you want to play it that way. The various spy powers and the ability to save up the other half of the uh, spy puzzle piece to activate a spy power at some point really helps to mix the game up a bit. This game does of course have elements of luck in it, particularly with the military police uh, symbols and where they're going to pop up, but I feel like the luck can be pretty well mitigated because you can manipulate the direction that you put the tiles in. I also think that it helps that the resources are placed at very regular intervals, so you can kind of estimate when the next one will be popping up. I don't have a lot of criticism for this game. I do sometimes feel like I'm doing everything right and I still lose though, um, and that is just because there's always going to be good and bad luck in a game like this, but that's not a knock against it. And though the random elements can interfere with your strategy, I do appreciate that they're there, because puzzle games that don't have a random element are essentially only playable until they are solved. If this game looks like it would be fun to you, and you like the idea of running away from the police while attempting to trace a very specific path, then I think you'll find this fun. I know I had a good time with it. Thank you so much for watching! Um, if you haven't already, then please subscribe, and if you would like to help support the channel, you can check me out on Patreon. You can also check out the Facebook group for Solo Adventurers. And before we end, I just want to give a very special shout out to my heroic tier patron, Joshua Jumbles. So until next time, friends, stay adventurous.